My alarm has just gone off at five o'clock and all I can hear outside is pouring rain. So this morning I have woke up in Worcester. I'm off to Whitchurch to tip this load of organic oats. Then I've got a Winsford to Wakefield and then I'm over to Flixborough for a load. Cup of tea done and I'm just gonna have a quick walk around check and then we can go. Walk around checks need to be completed whether it's raining or shining. And although we haven't had the best summer this year, you can definitely tell a difference with the weather with these darker mornings. And it's nice to see that she still looks great when it's pouring down with rain. Once that's completed, I fill out my daily checks book and it's off to Whitchurch. I head out of the industrial state and onto the M5, heading north. This trip should take just over an hour and a half and I should hopefully arrive just before seven. It's not long then before I'm merging onto the M6. And at this time of the morning, luckily it's clear as a bell, which means it's not long to junction 10A where I need to merge onto the M54. I leave the M54 at junction three and head right around the roundabout onto the A41. And I take this road all the way up to Whitchurch, which is almost 30 miles away. And I have a fair few roundabouts to go over before I get there. And then I pick up the lane to the farm and luckily because it's still so early, I don't really meet much traffic. When I get into the farm, I realize that there is already one of our trucks on the Weybridge. Well, seeing as I'm gonna have to wait for one of ours to tip, I think that's cup of tea time. To boil water, I just put a jug of water in the microwave for five minutes. So just gonna make myself a little spot of breakfast while I'm here as well. Once the truck in front of me has weighed in, I can then pull onto the Weybridge. Looks like we're uh, tipping on the conveyor. I've got my ticket and I've also got my grain passport from where I loaded. So I need to take that into their office. It looks like there's only one person here tipping the lorry. So I think he might have started him off. And then once he's started, he might come over and weigh me in then I'll have to go and wait so he can get back onto the Weybridge. Probably. That's my guess. In the meantime, I can have my porridge. Isn't it funny? I've got organic oats and I'm eating porridge. wonder if I've actually ever eaten any oats that I've actually hauled. As you can see, Luke is tipping into the grain store via the conveyor. Luke is now in Rachel's old lorry and I can finally tell you that Rachel has now had a little girl. Oh, yeah, I was right. He's coming to weigh me in. Well, I think this is going to be a bit of a palaver of a day already. So he said that he was only expecting one load, even though I did ring up last night. He's also said that he's found a bug in my load. I now need to wait until eight o'clock until somebody is in an office somewhere that he can ring and confirm, which is probably gonna really screw up my day. Um, I'm just gonna put on break, finish my porridge and um, hope for the best. So right at the end of tipping in a conveyor, um, you do open the tailboard just to let the last little bit out and he can sweep out. Once Luke is all swept out and ready to go, we have a little game of musical lorries as he needs to get back onto the Weybridge. And I just still need to wait until eight o'clock. They do have a cleaning facility here for loads with bugs in it. So I'm hoping that I will still be able to tip it here and not have to take it somewhere else. While I've been waiting, I've been looking up where I'm going next. I'm going over to Winsford and I'm collecting salt from Winsford and I'm taking that to Wakefield but what happens is you're given the destination of Wakefield and then you don't actually get the address until you get your ticket once you've loaded. I know. What I've done though is because I've done the salt before I know that it goes into highways depots so I've just google searched highways dep depot in Wakefield managed to find where I think it is on their website on this god awful map but then I went on to Google Maps managed to find it went on Street View and I think hopefully that's the one because sometimes they have a highways depot and then they have other salt bunkers sort of dotted around hopefully I have made things easy for myself but with how today's going so far I don't know He's just come and knocked on my door and told me that there will not be anyone until half past eight now. So another half an hour at least. 
sat here before they make a decision. Really worth me getting up at five o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? It's now nine o'clock and I still haven't heard anything. I've gone to find somebody. I ca now cannot find anyone. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have to sit here and wait. And about five minutes after that, he came back with an answer. Luckily, I can tip there, but I will be tipping into the cleaning facility rather than into the shed that Luke tipped into. It's crazy and quite frustrating sometimes how we have to wait for decisions made by an office when there are problems, as the farmer and I could both see that this was the most sensible option for all parties. I am also tipping into a conveyor, and this will take about 20 minutes to half an hour. Once I'm empty, I can open the tailboard and give the trailer a really good sweep out. It's really important in between these two loads that the trailer is swept out thoroughly. Then I can shut the tailboard, make sure everything's secure and manoeuvre around onto the weighbridge to get myself weighed out and I can finally go. Right, that is that tip finally. So, onwards to Winsford. Winsford is just under an hour north of here. So I head back down the lane and through the village towards the main roads. But it is now almost 10 o'clock and the roads are much busier than they were when I came in. That was lucky. PG skips, so PG tips. I follow the A roads up towards Nantwich, out the other side and up towards Winsford. There are a number of different gates going into the salt mine, but I need to take the furthest one down the road. When I arrive at the gate, there is a chap there stood in the rain waiting to speak to all the drivers. Come back out yeah. into gate seven. Yeah. And then follow the diversion signs, it'll take you where you need to be. Right, okay, all right. Cheers. The road that I need to take inside the salt mine is closed, so I need to go back down the road where I came and go into the next gate down. And then I follow the diversion signs all the way round and onto the weighbridge. Because I've not been here for some time, I have to do an induction before I can actually weigh in and get loaded. So I'm gonna go and do that, and then I can go back on the weigh bridge, get weighed in and get loaded. Winter periods, but with an increase in activity comes an increase in the need for you to be more aware of your surroundings. Luckily, it didn't completely send me to sleep and I pull back round onto the weigh bridge. <laughs> 38.1 Yeah. Uh, WTO3 SEA. Then I have to show my new e certificate that I have just received. Thank you. Pause about halfway down the long street. So back onto the main yeah, road, back down on the main to road, Yeah. Head towards the big roundabout. Right. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> So for this load, I need to go into a different gate again. So I head back down the road and reverse in next to the two trucks that are waiting for the same product that I am. By the sounds of it, this is quite a coarse mix of salt. And to be honest, I don't really know why there's different grades of road salt. And wait, been here for 15 minutes already. A loader hasn't arrived. There's two to be loaded in front of me. So I think I might be here a little while and after this morning, it's kind of the last thing I wanted, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. Not long after I said that, the loader turns up and he actually loads us really quickly. And he weighs it via his bucket, which means that I don't need to weigh it. He gives me a toot when I'm loaded. And I give him one back to say thank you. Then I need to go back out of the gate, down the road and back into the gate where the weighbridge was. Unfortunately, I have to go through a wheel wash, which is full of recycled water and I get a flash from another West Country truck on the way back down to the Weybridge. The outbridge is a slightly different one than I went on before, and this one I need to work myself, using the card I got given when I weighed in. The machine prints me out two Weybridge tickets, one for my destination and one for myself. This will also have the delivery address on it so I can see if I was right earlier. When I pull off the Weybridge, there is a big sheeting area in front of me, which is ideal because I can pull up and make sure that I can plan my route properly. 
looking at the address that I've got now, I was actually right when I Google searched earlier and it is actually the same place. I can just head on down there. I've already planned my route, so I do. I can get on with it. That is at least one good thing that's happened today. And unfortunately, I have to go through yet another wheel wash that has recycled water. Looking at Google Maps today, there's quite a lot of traffic around, and it seems the best way back to the M6 is through Middlewich. I stay on the M6 all the way up to the M62, where I head east. I hit a little bit of traffic on the approach to the M60, but luckily it wasn't too bad, and only went down to 40 miles an hour for a short time. By this point, I'm running a little low on fuel, so I pop into the services to fill up with diesel. It's quite busy in here, and I've already had quite a few holdups today, so I go on the next available pump, even though it's not on the right side. And then it's back onto the motorway towards the M1, where I take the southbound slip road and head down to junction 39, as the depot is at the bottom end of Wakefield. Going into Wakefield this way, I knew that there was a couple of low bridges, but I'd already checked on the map if I could get under them. Generally, because my cab and my trailer are quite low because of the type of work I do, I'd never have too many problems with bridges, which quite often saves me some quite long detours. And as for this one, I don't need to worry at all, apart from the chap that's running in the road. And after just over two hours, I'm at my destination. I've tried to ring the number on the ticket a couple of times, but there has been no answer. So I'm going to put my high vis on and go and see somebody to find out where I need to go and what I need to do. And then I see another truck on its way out. So I put my window down to hopefully speak to him and find out what to do. Carrying inside the shed up on the bucket. Will I just go in? Yeah, just go in oh, and then spin right. it round to yeah. the top. And then if you go inside, she's on the bucket. Ah, right, okay, right. okay. So I do as I'm told and reverse back into the gap and spin myself around. And I'm guessing that I need to back up to the cone shaped building that they normally keep salt in. I can see where the chap tipped in the truck that has just left and I can see a digger inside of the building clearing his load so I'm hoping that that means that it won't be too long until I get tipped. Right, I might need to go and see someone. Well I'm finally here and I did make it in plenty of time. It is quarter to two and I had to be here by half past two so that's good. Typical on <laughs> places like this like one person says one thing and then the other person says you need to be here and uh, God knows, no one's actually spoke to me properly yet, just shouted at me. Never mind. And then after I say that, the lady that was on the digger inside the shed comes out and speaks to me and explains things properly, instead of just shouting at me or expecting me to know after I've never been here before. So I back into the shed as instructed and open my tailboard. It's always so much easier when you find someone that can communicate properly and it's also nice to see another lady on the biggest machine that I've seen in here. This is a nice easy tailboard tip and will only take a few minutes. I want to get as much of it in the shed as possible but I also need to protect my tailboard from being ripped off and I also need to watch the height of my trailer. I've already confirmed with the lady that I can sweep out after I've tipped so I get my brush and I make sure that the trailer is spotless before I move on to the next load. In the end, we got there and it was actually quite pleasant. Right. I presume I am going to Flixborough now. I am going to give a quick ring before I go. Good afternoon. Hello, all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, I've just tipped at Wakefield. Am I going straight to Flixborough? Um, 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 I believe so. I'm going to check. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, okie dokie. All right. All right, cheers. Bye. So now I'm going to make my way over to Flixborough, which is just over an hour east of here. 
I head back up towards the M62, but by this point I haven't got much time left on my four and a half hour drive. So I pull into Ferry Bridges Services for a quick break. It seems to be quite full up in here and the only space I can get is behind another truck. I'm also going to take this opportunity to go and have a shower as I've done all of my dirty work today and all I need to do now is load up. And hooks there. Nice. You wouldn't believe how much of a difference hooks and a little bench makes in a shower facility when you're trying to juggle all your clothes and your towel. Then it's back to the truck, I have a little snack and it's time to go. I head back onto the M62 as far as the M18 and I take the slip road that takes me up over the motorway that I've just been on. I only stay on the M18 for two junctions before heading onto the M180 towards Scunthorpe. Just before I get to Scunthorpe, I turn off for Flixborough and follow signs for the industrial estate, which is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I'm here at the mill that I'm going to load at, so I'm going to take the ticket up and see if it's ready. I'm pleased to say that it is ready and the chap directs me under Tunnel 3. The best thing about these loading bays is that they have a weigh bridge underneath them, so the first thing he does is weigh me in. The product that I am taking is right at the back of the tunnel. So I back up and get loaded from front to back. The chap shouts down to let me know when to pull forwards and stop. And we do this until the trailer is completely loaded and it takes no time at all. He lets me know that I'm loaded and then I go up and get my ticket and my sample. Now I'm just going to pull off the bridge, give it a shunt forward, get the sheet on and head for home. Not that I make it home but it's close. I've just pulled outside to work out how far I will get back down from here. Um, I'm heading back to Wayne's store now. It is now quarter past four. I have until quarter past eight to make a 15 hour day. And I have three hours and 42 minutes driving left. If I keep going and don't stop, I will make the most out of my 10 hour drive in a 15 hour day. And if I don't stop anywhere, I can start 15 minutes earlier tomorrow as well. Happy days. So I head off straight away and make the most of the time that I have left today. I head back up the M180 before heading south on the M18 where I do encounter a little bit of traffic but it is moving and I think it's just a volume of traffic for the time of day and it's not long before I'm heading south on the M1 and then at junction 23A I pick up the A42 which turns into the M42 and before I know it I'm on the M5 heading past Worcester where I started this morning. I make it a little bit further south than Worcester and pull into an industrial estate just off the motorway. Right, that's that. So, so what we've got here, I've got 40 minutes driving left and it is five to eight. So I had 20 minutes to use basically. I've had a really good run. I, if I'd have gone any further and used that 14 minutes, I wouldn't have got anywhere sensible. So this was the best option to stop here. Yeah, that makes sense. So then I've got 14 minutes left, but I've done nine hours and 47 minutes driving. That means I've got 13 minutes left. I don't know. Maybe I click over in a minute or something. Anyway, right, do my paperwork and then I can start at five o'clock tomorrow. So it'll probably be bedtime in a minute. Boiling the water for my cup of tea and now I'm going to get my dinner out. So I have a salad again today. 
To be honest, I thought today was going to be a complete disaster once I got to the first place I tipped this morning and I got held up. But actually, I've had quite a good day. I've done everything that I've needed to do. I've used my 10 hour drive and even though I had a little bit of traffic, it actually hasn't been too bad today. Got everything done that we needed to do, even if we did have a lot of hold ups. And I got a shower in as well. It's all fell into place in the end. While I was eating my tea, I watched a video on YouTube that Fred Parker sent me the link to, and it was so good. It was about trucking in the 80s. I will add the link in the description for you to watch because I thought it was really good. There's a lot of differences and a lot of similarities. And just generally like the attitude of other road users towards lorry drivers and how they act on the road. Nothing has changed by the sounds of things. So thank you very much, Fred Parker. And I think that is probably time for bed now. <laughs>